tiens la parole et messieurs I give the floor now Malos, to Monsieur Malos, President of the European Economic and Social Committee. Mr. Malos. Thank you, Chair. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, excuse me for coughing, says the speaker. I'd like to thank the uh, IJJO for having invited one of the EU institutions, which is the European Economic and Social Committee. It is perhaps not as well known as the European Commission or the Parliament, but it is the fifth uh, largest uh, organization of the EU with 353 members that represent civil society, employers, and uh, employees. We represent all areas of civil society, and we have the uh, right of uh, legal initiative. We create projects along with the European Commission, and we are among the main and most influential stakeholders in the lives of the institutions. So it is an honor to be president of the committee since April 2013, and I try to make our institution the voice of civil society in such a way that uh, European institutions, which are often uh, seen as uh, bureaucratic, indeed they are, might be more uh, sensitive to the problems of people and to add a more human dimension. In my efforts, I am very happy to point out the excellent cooperation we've developed throughout the years with the IJJO through several projects uh, that we have shared. I'd like to mention that over the past few years, the fact that we've had um, a report on sexual abuse against children uh, as well as uh, one on uh, childhood poverty, the rights of children, and more recently, our Belgian colleague Xavier Verboven, who is a very well-known union leader here in Belgium, a few months ago reported on a legislative package which was proposed by the European Commission, which is currently being debated at the European Parliament and the Council, a legislation which speaks about the presumption of innocence, the guaranteeing of children's rights, and the guaranteed access to legal aid. We've uh, we had an agreement over the past year with the European Parliament, and the Parliament is following out the opinion that we gave them. So I'd like to quote a part of it. This was nearly unanimously adopted at our plenary session last April, and it deals with the protection of children in the cases of legal procedures. The European Economic and Social Committee would like to point out the fact that children are in a very vulnerable situation when deprived of their liberty, and we should keep in mind the risks that this entails for their physical and mental and um, emotional integrity. And with the aid of the European Parliament, we, we would like to reinforce procedures and legal protections, both with administrative and, and uh, criminal procedures when it comes to children. I'd like to underline an important uh, step forward that was taken by another European uh, institution, was the Council of Europe, which adopted a text this year on children's rights, and we've also worked with the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, and that assembly calls on member states of the, the whole European continent within the Council of Europe, I believe it is 47 member states to date, it calls on all states to establish a specialized criminal justice system for children and to put into place laws, procedures and institutions that are specially thought out for children and to set, set the, the minimum age for legal responsibility at, at 14 years of age and to find solutions that are adapted for young delinquents 
and to ensure that, the, that, uh, that the, the, the private children of the liberty would be a last resort, as the title of our conference states. I would like to welcome this initiative, which uh, is going down the right path. Ladies and gentlemen, we're, it's been two weeks since the 25th anniversary of the United Nations Convention on uh, the Rights of the Child. A lot has been done, but a lot has yet to be done. And I hope that this conference will raise awareness more greatly on the consequences of the deprivation of, the, of children's liberty. Unfortunately, there are many countries, including in, in the, within the EU, where there are cases of abuse, exclusion. For example, Roma children. In many countries, including mine, they find themselves in, very, in a very vulnerable situation. Sometimes they are forced to become criminals by parents, by their parents or mafias, and then they are penalized and punished for their entire lives. So I think that this type of exclusion and discrimination against the Roma population is something that that uh, horrifies me because this is a European people just like all the others which has been the victim of discrimination and exclusion and we need to look at the roots of these problems and not the, the problems themselves the philosopher Michel Foucault wrote in 1975 a famous book called uh, To Survey and to Punish, and he said, among other things, well, I'll, I'll paraphrase, those who steal, we put them in, in prison. From where do we get this strange idea, this strange project of putting people away in, in order? In fact, prison should be a last resort. We know that most of the time, Prison actually leads to further uh, criminality. So we need another alternative for young people. We need to go further to solve the problems of the juvenile justice system and focus on prevention, education, and, and uh, let's try to uh, move away from uh, the criminal justice system and pre prevent the deprivation of children's liberty and, and lower the number of children arrested. Depriving children of their liberty is not the right response. We should integrate these children as fast as possible into the social and, and uh, life and uh, civil society. We know that children's uh, criminality rates are lowered if, depending on their social uh, milieu. So punishing them is the worst solution. We need to change our point of view. We need to ask ourselves, how can we put children into custody? Instead, we should be thinking of how to integrate them. So I'd like to say very briefly that we work with many civil society organizations and over the last several years, I've seen uh, a topic which is not my area of expertise, but I've seen that very often organizations have best practices which are not well known and not well enough recognized. In our committee, we focus on integration, for example, in reintegrating young delinquents through sport, which is, a, a, which is a program being run by the Royal Spanish Sports Federation, which I visited. They organize football matches for young people in prison with uh, very well-known um, football players in Spain, such as Iker Casillas, who, I, who is greatly involved in this project. And in this way, these uh, young people who are unfortunately behind bars uh, find a way to reintegrate into society, and, and this is a, an action of, of civil society. I'd like to mention also the, the, the our official opinion on um, sexual abuse and the prostitution of minors. Some of our colleagues made a site visit 
Français Air France, qui a un programme with a, de, de responsabilité the French Airline Air France, which has a corporate responsibility uh, program in Madagascar, to support a project of their foundation, which aims to create homes for young boys or young girls who unfortunately have fallen into prostitution, to get them out of that environment without criminalizing them, without punishing them. There are many, many uh, social, civil society in initiatives, and this goes beyond what governments and criminal systems can do. They can actually go hand in hand with uh, these uh, re-education or, or reintegration programs. And to finish off, I'd like to say that our true enemy for all of us, well, I think within the EU we have uh, two enemies. First, it's a prejudice, exclusion, discrimination. I mentioned the situation of the Roma people. There are many groups within or without the EU who are who face uh, prejudice and often it, it is assumed they will go to jail when children of other groups would not necessarily think about going to jail. So it's a problem of mentalities. But our true enemy is simply social exclusion, poverty, which uh, lead to criminality and ruin children's lives. Now, we have soci when society, including within the EU, becomes more and more unequal, we see that the gap between rich and poor is only becoming greater. It should not surprise us that then we see uh, criminal pro problems at every age. So, part of the European project is solidarity, and as we build Europe, we need to do away with discrimination and exclusion, including social exclusion. And I am very hopeful that in the coming years, with President Jean-Claude Juncker and Martin Schulz, and with uh, the other presidents of the other institutions, we will be able to give a more human face to the EU and to try to cooperate further with the rest of the world down this path. Uh, path. So thank you for having invited me to this conversation.